I'm going to share with you today a message, in a sense, it's not a Christmas message, but it's very relevant because even on Christmas time, when we go to the malls, we hear all sorts of carols and buy presents as, as uh, displayed on the stage, and Christmas trees and all that kind of thing. I just want to say that the essence of Christmas actually is a one-on-one encounter with Jesus. Without that, then it is meaningless. It is fleeting. It is just passing by. Christmas comes, Christmas goes, and of course, uh, Chinese New Year is around the corner. It's amazing, uh, Chinese New Year in January next year. So that, that kind of thing, you know, it just comes and goes. But I just want to en- encourage you, especially those of you who are here by invitation of your relatives or friends, and you have yet to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I encourage you? The most important issue about Christmas is a one-on-one encounter with Him. Without that, it is just tinsels and presents that He comes and He goes. So I'm going to use the person by the name of Zacchaeus as an example of what happens when we encounter the Lord. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to verse 9. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. So he has entered Jericho and now he was passing through, exiting out of Jericho. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Can I just stop there? You must understand that in those days, these Jewish tax collectors are the dogs for the Roman Empire. They collect taxes from their own people and uh, they collect more and uh, they're corrupt. And not only was Zacchaeus, a tax collector, but he was a chief tax collector for the entire region of Jericho. So he was very despised. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be a guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. Very interesting, Jesus said this, and I will expound on it, explain a little bit more. Verse 10, For a son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Not who was lost, what was lost. There's no mistake about that. I just share with you, under these four headings, who was Zacchaeus? Why did he seek Jesus? Why should a tax collector, as important, as wealthy as he was, seek Jesus? Why was he so desperate to seek Jesus? And what did Jesus do? And then what happened to Zacchaeus finally? You know, um, incidentally, just to let you know how despised tax collectors were, in Matthew 18, uh, when Jesus talked about church discipline, he said that if someone has wronged you or sinned against you, go and see him one-on-one. And if he does not repent, then take two or three witnesses and go and see him to see whether he confessed or not. And if that person does not confess, 
then tell you to the entire church of what he has done. Wow, that's serious. But if he still doesn't repent, then Jesus says, treat him like a pagan and a tax collector. Jesus' words, huh? That's how despised tax collectors were in the eyes of his Jewish colleagues. So who was Zacchaeus? Several things we know about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus' name actually means purity. Zacchaeus' name means innocent. So clearly, his parents, when Zacchaeus was born, had great dreams for this guy. He's going to be a man of high integrity. He's going to be innocent. He's going to be pure. He's going to be set aside for God, you know. Wow, this man is amazing. But it didn't turn out that way. It didn't turn out that way. <laughs> he became a tax collector, despised among the Jews. But he was very wealthy. Extremely extremely wealthy but not well liked. You know, many of us sacrifice integrity, even reputation, for wealth. Sad. So before we judge Zacchaeus, let's not point a finger at him, huh? okay? Because there are many, many contemporaries like that. The amazing thing of Zacchaeus is this. Even though he was very wealthy, but not like, how, how do I know he was not like? Because he was known in Jericho. Jericho was not that big, you know. It was maybe a couple of thousand people, that's all there was. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, when the people lined the streets to welcome Jesus, it was not like, the, you know, when Liverpool uh, uh, won the, 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 the World Cup, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, and the streets are crowded, not like that. Maybe about one or two lines, that's all. Because Le Jericho is not big. But they, they, they don't give him the place, you know. It, you know, if you're a VIP, if you're well-liked, when, you, when, you, when people see you looking for a place, hey, come, 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 come. Come, Pastor, come, come, come. Something like that, lah. But Zacchaeus, when they saw Zacchaeus come in, they, they, they made it in such a way that don't, you cannot come in, you cannot come in. Why? Because I don't want you to come in, you're not well liked. And uh, very lonely man. Don't you think so? Very lonely man. Very wealthy. No problem. Anything he wants, he can get. Come to my point with this. Hey, no need to be so wealthy one. Huh? I, I, I've got a feeling that most Malaysians are not poor one. Though. Generally, uh, I don't think so we are poor, right? We, 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 we have enough of food to eat. And the Malaysians are one of the most travelled race in the world. Everywhere you see Malaysians. Everywhere you see Malaysians. Anywhere you go, you can travel, right? We, and our passport is one of the most respectable passports in the entire world. I think the third most respectable passport. So, so you don't need to be so wealthy one. You, most of us have enough and to spare for this generation and maybe a couple of other generations. So, my point is this. No need, huh? We have enough and to spare. But this guy, Zacchaeus, you know, he wants to get more and more and more. And because of this, he was lonely, absolutely no peace. And he had possessions, he had position, but he had no peace. And it's amazing. Maybe this is the only reference I have uh, to Christmas in this passage. You know, when, when we have Christmas, one of the things that the angels sang when Jesus Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem, was joy to the world, the Lord has come, we sang that says now, peace and goodwill to all mankind, right? So when Jesus Christ comes, he brings peace. 
He brings peace. Not so much world peace, but inward peace. Why? Because Isaiah 6, Isaiah 9 tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the what of peace? The Prince of Peace. He's not only the peace, he's the Prince of Peace. So in other words, even around this Christmas time, peace is a very precious commodity. It's a very, very precious commodity. I, I, I know what it is like. Was, uh, just as recently as last night, I couldn't sleep. I don't know why. I just couldn't sleep. And uh, I don't know, I think my spirit, uh, something in my spirit just disturbing me. And uh, maybe somebody doesn't want me to preach this message this morning. And I woke up, my eyes were swollen up. I couldn't see, you know. But then, Pastor, did you pray for me this morning? At least I can see now. It's fine now. So, all the more I know, hey, this message is very important. It's very important. Nobody is going to stop me preaching this message. Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Why? Because in this Christmas time, Jesus Christ came to give peace. And that's what he wants to give it to you. For people like Zacchaeus, and, and I, I, I suspect quite a number of you, you are bogged down by the cares of the world, the worries of the world, maybe chasing after money, I don't know. But whatever it is, I just want to say this to you. In this Christmas season, one-on-one -on -one encounter with God, Zacchaeus found the Prince of Peace. And his life was entirely changed. An amazing thing was this. Jericho means change. And it's not coincidental that Jesus was passing through Jericho not by accident but by divine appointment. Very interesting. Very, very interesting that Jesus was passing through Jericho and it was in Jericho that Zacchaeus' entire life was changed. Can I say this to you? Some of you are here for the first time, brought in by your relatives or friends, and you're wondering, yeah, I like what I hear so far, you know. I like the decor, I like the singing. But can I say this to you? More than just all of this, I want to believe that nothing happens by accident, that the fact that you are here today, God wants to give you a transformation in your life, and for, foremost, to give you peace. To give you peace. And that's what happens to Zacchaeus. Why did Zacchaeus seek Jesus? Because he was empty. He was wealthy, but he was empty. And there are many people who are wealthy, but empty. He has a big void inside of him. He, he well, he, he had everything he wanted, but he was so desperate, so desperate to chase after that one thing which was missing in his life that money cannot buy. Peace, purpose, a sense of belonging, value. Wow! And it was an entire void. So Jesus says, what does it profit a man if he gains the entire world? I'm not saying that all the worldly things are unimportant. I'm not saying that. They are very important. But it's not the only thing. Can I encourage you during this Christmas time? Can we think again? Or else we'll be running from Christmas to Christmas to Christmas to Christmas and everything is the same. Before, before long, 2020 is around the corner and 2020 is the beginning of a new decade, you know. Do you know that? It's not the beginning of a new year. It's the beginning of the 2020s. It's a new decade and we don't know what's going to happen, right? We started 2010, just 10 years ago. And now 2020s already, you know. And before long, 2030s, you know. Peace. So, can I encourage you that even as you are here today, brought in by friends or relatives, 
or uh, very seldom you are in church and now you're in church in a few times. I, I want to believe that God has a message for you. But one thing is sure. You have to be desperate for Him. You must want it. So how, how, how do I know Zacchaeus was desperate? You know, in those days, a VIP, they wear very long robes, you know. How do I know he was desperate? The Bible tells us he ran. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, since Jesus was coming that way. Jesus was passing by. And so Zacchaeus ran. Hey, VIPs don't run one, no. Have you ever seen Mahathir and the... And the sultan run? VIPs don't run one. Huh? But Zacchaeus ran. Because he was desperate. So I want to challenge you today. How desperate are you to find value and peace in life beyond your wealth? If not, Christmas comes, Christmas goes, and everything remains the same. There is a void. There is an emptiness inside you, like that chaos. It's very interesting that when Zacchaeus ran after the Lord, what he was looking for, and I would dare say, that it would be the same for many of you here today. You are looking for something greater in life than just earning money, than just going on cruises, even though cruises are important. But at the end of the day, many of you have been to 20 cruises already. Lah. But the 21st one is the same one. Lah. Many of you have got so many bags already, so many shoes already. Same la. So there's more to it than all this worldly thing. So what did Zacchaeus want? To be valued, to be long, to be more fulfilled in life other than pursuing worldly wealth. So, so can I challenge you even on this Christmas season? I'm not asking you not to work, not to chase after all these things. They are very important. Succeed in your business by all means. By all means, do well. But I just want to say this to you. It is not the only thing in life. There's more to it in life than pursuing after wealth. And Zacchaeus understood that. So, that's what he wanted. He needed a vision of Jesus. But the amazing thing was this. He was a short man, you see. So as he came, you know what, what prevented him from seeing Jesus? All the heads. All the kapala and the kalapas. So all the, kap all the kapalas. So, so he couldn't see Jesus because it was so short. Do you know that every one of these heads and mindsets represents a worldview? He couldn't see. Why? Because every one of these people blocked his vision of Jesus. So what he must do? Climb a tree. Climb a tree. So how desperate are you? If I share this with you, and you tell me, Pastor, thank you very much, but that doesn't apply to me, well, it's okay. But I suspect that for many of us, there is more to life than just doing what I've been doing all these years. And I want to believe that you are here this morning, not by accident, but by divine appointment and invitation, even though you're invited by your friends and relatives, so that this Christmas, you can receive something more, something greater, something more fulfilling than just pursuing worldly wealth that comes and goes. And you and I know that. We know that. How, how much does worldly wealth satisfy us? You tell me. I don't know. I... I I just want to encourage you. It could be worldly views of uh, 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 um, 
materialism, worldly views of philosophies, worldly, worldly views of, of uh, 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 I don't know, arrogance, the, you know, uh, 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 intellectualism, I don't know. But don't allow any of this mindset, so to speak, hates to block you this day to have a true, authentic, genuine vision of Jesus. So what you must do? Climb up a tree. Now, the tree in the Bible signifies the cross. The tree in the Bible, again and again in Deuteronomy, in the Exodus, and other parts of the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was crucified on the tree. He took the curse on the tree. Because the olden days, those, those days, the cross was taken from the tree. You know what I'm saying? So, it is a symbol of Zacchaeus climbing up a tree with all the overflowing ropes so that he's desperate to see Jesus. And this is what we want to recommend to you. And we have enough people here amongst us to tell you that whatever that I share with you today is not fantasy, it is not just fiction. Why? Because many of the lives were changed. When they came to Jesus, they found purpose, they found healing, they found transformation, they found reconciliation, they found fulfillment, they found a higher purpose in living their life. Believe, and they found peace. And they found peace. You know, I, I have with me, uh, in my hand, the book written for our 25th anniversary. It's about a lot, a lot of values I hear on why the ch this church has grown from 15 people 25 years ago to where we are today, well over 4,000. In 25 years, we grew. So there's a lot of lessons here. But in this book, in page 40 to 43, we have a sample, sampling of some of the lives that were changed. Not all, because... Is too many to document. But from page 40 to 43 of this book, we have people who are prepared to give us their picture. Why? Because their lives will totally change. We have marriages reconciled. We have cancer healed. We have stage, stage 4 lung cancer healed. We have people with financial difficulties now turn around. We have people who are, who are, who are gangsters and, 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 and ruffians and now doing well is in college. And we have an LGBT, a transgender, who is now totally transformed. And, and we have people, entire families in the community. And this is Mr. Ng, who was in a coma. What's one of those names that we put up there for, to, to pray, you know, we, we put out there for pray, and he was one of those names, and he woke up from his coma, and his entire family was saved. Come on, let's give God a clap offering. His entire family is saved, and today they are serving. Entire family is serving, you know. Look, what, what, what are all these things I'm telling you? What, what I want to share with you is this. I'm not sharing with you fiction. Lives have been changed, transformed. Because now, these people, I'm very sure, have a story to tell. And it is his story, their story, his story. And we can replicate this hundreds of times, even in this morning itself. Lives have been changed. And I'm not just sharing with you things that, that is fictional and, and it's another message. It's not. I mean, even as I talk, I, I, I begin to... Remember, even there was one lady, uh, uh, Gilbert can check me out on this. You know, this lady who, who was uh, uh, troubled by demons. So troubled by demons that the demons followed her all the way, all the time. And, and, and she's so troubled by it, she went to a Buddhist priest, Buddhist monk, and after the, in a trance, the Buddhist monk told her that the demon that is following her is too powerful. He can't do it. So he, he connected with a, a, a colleague of hers, and this colleague of hers, who goes to another church, brought her to us. And I think it was Jinai, right? Jinai and Gilbert. And, and, and they, 
went to the house, they cleansed up the place, prayed, praised, worshipped, and they burned all the things that was, all the charms and everything. And today, she's totally set free. Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Who can do this? Who can do this? Only someone greater, stronger can overpower. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. So when Jesus Christ came, 2,000 years ago on Christmas Day, may not be the exact day, but it's a season of time we remember His birth. He came so that you and I can have transformation, can have peace, can have change for the better, understand, into things that money cannot buy. That's what I'm trying to say. Zacchaeus is a rich man. He's a rich man. Or else for everything is he. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You know, that's how much Jesus values a soul, but loses his own soul. I want to highlight Sherry, those scriptures there just now. Now this lady, I mean, many of you know who she is, but many of you don't as well because you're new here. She has stage 4 cancer. You know the cancer has metastasized so much to her sternum, stage 4 breast cancer. You know, that the, 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 the secondary was the size of my fist. And it's really pushing into her mediastinum, pushing back her lungs, eroded into her sternum. You know, it's a very painful one, you know. When the tumour erodes uh, into your bone, uh, it's very painful. And I, I can remember when Pastor Li Chu and I and, and the pastors of this church went to visit her and we did communion with her very frequently. She was in pain. She was in severe pain. Why? Because the cancer is slowly but surely eating into her bone. But through communion and through prayer, today, I think it must be almost 15 years now, she's totally healed and she wrote a book called There is Hope. Documenting her journey. Documenting her, 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 her journey with life and death. And not only that, the reason why I highlight Sherry is to share with you, my friends, there is hope, you see. There is hope. Amen? Come on, let's give God a cup of offering. Come on. And God used her to start a ministry called the El Piso Ministry. L is God. Piso is belief. I believe or I hope in God. El Piso Ministry that ministers to cancer patients. A lot of these people are cancer patients. Not all of them survive. Not all of them are healed. But many can, are healed. I'm not saying everyone is healed. But there is hope, you see. There is hope. So I, I, I want to say this to you, my friend. I do not believe this by accident that you are here this morning. And it's not by accident as I sought the Lord as to what to share with you that... The, the, the name Zacchaeus came to my mind. Tell the people. And the, and the evil one tried to prevent me from sharing it this morning, you see. But I know it's important. Why? Because you can find peace. You can find joy. You can find purpose. You can find fulfillment. Like Zacchaeus did. You know his life was totally changed. See, when, when you and I are desperate for God, when you and I run, literally run to meet God. Look, if you don't have any desire for, for, for fried kwetiau, you won't look for it one, right? If you have no desire to, for certain things, you won't look for it one, right? If you have no desire to see this particular doctor who actually uh, uh, operates in Ipo, you won't travel to Ipo look for him one, right? What propels you to do that? Why? Because you know that that guy can do something for you. So you drive all the way to Johor Bahru to see this person. Or some of you even drive all the way to Johor Bahru to, to, to eat something, you know what I'm saying? You're a foodie. Okay? But, but the, you must, what I'm trying to say is this, how desperate are you for change? You know, there was another person in this passage, in the preceding verses, in chapter 18 of Luke. It's amazing that met Jesus as he entered into Jericho because Zacchaeus met Jesus as he exited from Jericho. 
But now, there was another person by the name of Bartimaeus, and you find that in Luke chapter 18, verse 35 onwards. When Jesus entered into Jericho, there was a man who was blind, and he kept crying out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's how desperate he was. People start, try to stop Bartimaeus. Like people try to stop Zacchaeus. But it didn't stop Bartimaeus. Neither did it stop Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was so desperate, he climbed up a tree in all his flowing robes. Bartimaeus didn't stop. He cried even louder, the Bible tells us. Shh, stop it! But Jesus heard that. Amongst all the cheers and all the, the people, Jesus heard a cry. Son of David, have mercy on me. I need you, Lord. I need you. And Jesus stopped. Bring him to me. And he asked this critical question. What do you want? What do you want? If you tell me, Pastor, I'm very happy. I'm very contented. I want nothing. Okay, no? But I want to encourage you. There is more to life. Believe me, when I say this, I'm not saying this with a tongue in cheek. In other words, I'm not saying, ah, yeah, because, you know, pastor, you know, uh, yeah, how much can you pay you? Uh, you don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Huh? I, I'm, 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 look, as I look before me, there are many people here who are, who are, who are reasonably well off. But they have Jesus, you see. And I see their life change. I see their entire family change. They still go about doing what they, go, they do. But there is meaning, there is hope, there is purpose. So, so can I encourage you that even as you come to the Lord this morning, what will Jesus do? Like Bartimaeus, like Zacchaeus, Jesus will stop for you. You must remember, this is the final week of Jesus' life no, on earth. He was going from Galilee to Jerusalem. He was a man in a hurry. He was there, he was going to Jerusalem to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. He was a man with a mission. But in spite of all of these things, one-on-one -on -one encounter, you see, he stopped for Bartimaeus. He stopped for Zacchaeus. And he will stop for you. What do you want? But you must cry out to him. You must cry out to him. And you know, you know something? What, 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 what strikes me? It's a very short passage. It's just nine verses. I kept reading it. One thing struck me was that when Jesus came to the spot, where Zacchaeus was, Jesus looked up. Many people look down on Zacchaeus. Only the Son of Man, the Son of God looks up. Why? Because you matter. And, and Jesus didn't say, Zacchaeus, look, uh, I, I'm going to bless you, uh, Zacchaeus. I'm going to give you that wonderful deal which you've been praying about. I'm going to give you that healing. I'm going to give it... Now, that's important, he will do that for you, as he has done for so many people. Four pages in that book, and many more. You come for the watch night service this year. I'm going to speak on a message entitled, This Day We Raise Up Ebenezer, which is a powerful message. You come. I, I'm going to have five testimonies, and many more. In other words, the reason why I share this is because lives have been transformed. And, and it is my wish is that your life will also have meaning, you see. And this is exactly what happened to, 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 to Zacchaeus. I'm going to close. See, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. More than anything else. Blessings come, blessings go. Can I encourage those of you, of you who have already been Christians for a long time? This Christmas, even as we come to celebrate together with the congregation in this church at BY, and together with uh, people all over the world, most important is your relationship with the Lord. As you close this year, 
How is your relationship with Jesus? Because that's all He wants you. He wants to have dinner with you. I'm coming to your house, Zacchaeus. What? Yeah. I'm coming to your family. I want to enter into your family. I want to come into your family business. I want to come into all the problems that you are facing today in your work. I want to come. I would have a relationship with you. So Jesus says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him. Isn't that what he wanted to do with Zacchaeus? That's the heart of the Lord. You see. Believe me, my friend, that's the heart of the Lord. The Lord doesn't want your money. Eh? Don't worry. As you pass the bag around, people always say, I always collect money. Man. Please. That's not the issue. It's not your time. It's not your talents. He just wants to relate. He just wants to relate to you. To bless you. To talk to you. To come into your home. Come into your situation. That's the Lord. What do you want? He said the Father. Yes. Lord, He said, that I may see. That I might see, He said. And the Lord opened His eyes. For Zacchaeus, he found more than just everything. What, 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 what happened to Zacchaeus? He was blessed. Now the taker became a giver. Wow! He said, Lord, I give four times. I give back four times. And he was glad. He was filled with joy. Hey, a lot of things money cannot buy one. Huh? And I know what I'm talking about. I've seen enough of fractured families, of families in which the, 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 the head of the family chase after wealth at the expense of relationship with the family, even expense of relationship of, to his own health. Wow. Literally, they work themselves to death. Why? Today, on this Christmas weekend, I want to open the altar for any one of you to come to the Lord, understand? So that this Christmas is not only meaningful to you, but it's personal to you. And it's urgent. Today, today, I come to your house. Zacchaeus, he said. Wow, you know Zacchaeus' name, you know. Nobody told him that, right? He knows your name. And he wants to come into your situation to help you, give you joy. Give you purpose. And this is where verse 10 comes in. With this, I'll close. Jesus says, Salvation has now come to this home. Sozo. The Greek word is sozo. With all this package of blessing has now come to you. So I just want to say this to you, my friend. Even as we close this year, appropriate the fullness of the sozo package is yours. When Jesus saved you, He didn't only save you from eternal death to eternal life. He saved you even in this life to find peace, to find joy. And if it's not your time to die, you won't die one. Huh? He will heal you one. It's, your, it's a whole salvation package. But more important than that, Jesus says this, for the Son of Man comes to seek and to save that which was lost. What is that? In other words, more than just your person, it's your entire ecosystem. Your entire ecosystem. Your family, your work, the state of your business. Don't you think Jesus is interested in that? Because He said, the Son of Man comes to seek and to save that which was lost. Wow, not, not only who. Huh? Listen to me very carefully. The entire salvation package 
encompasses the wellness, the comprehensive wholeness of your ecosystem around you, your family, your work, your relationships, the internal milieu, the, the, the peace inside of you. My mom is here. She's 98 years old, 97. Sorry. I told her age. But the reason why she is still comes to hear my message, you know, 98 years old, 97. He asked her. Because the internal milieu is at peace with God. It's because the internal milieu is at peace with God. So what I'm sharing with you today is not something that's fictional. I shared with you all the people who are prepared to show their face to testify. This work, it works by faith. There's more to life than chasing after worldly things. So today, as I close, I want to open the altar. I want to believe there are some of you here who have yet to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So can I encourage you? All heads bowed, all eyes closed. I believe that the Word of God, as it is being delivered, will not return void unto Him, but it will achieve the purpose for which it was sent. And I want to believe that it was sent specifically to you. I'm nothing but a postman, you see. I'm nothing. The pastor or the preacher is the postman delivering a message. But you have to receive the message. You don't believe the postman. You believe what is written in the message. And the message that I shared with you has eternal value. Then all heads bowed, all eyes closed. I want to encourage those of you who have yet to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because your friends brought you here and you graciously agreed to come. And you are here because your children brought you here or your relative brought you here and you agreed to come. Thank you for being here. But more important than being here is the fact that today is a day of salvation. Salvation has now come to your household. So all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, there's no one looking around, at a count of three, you raise your hands. High enough for me to see it, and we will pray for you and with you. You have not received Jesus Christ publicly, but you want to. No compulsion. But you want to make this Christmas meaningful. You want to make this encounter with Jesus personal, meaningful. So that, so that everything is changed. The Jericho Road transforms you. Whoa! So I'm going to count. One, two. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. So do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be afraid. No matter what it is that bucks you, your family, your work, your future, your health, the Lord is here because He's the Prince of Peace. So I've got to count up to three. You want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You quickly raise up your hand high enough for me to see. One, two, three. Is there anyone? Just raise it high enough for me as I see that hand, ma'am. Right in the center. Anybody else? No one looking around? Yes, I see that hand. Yes, I see that hand too. Help me. Those, what the, the light is shining on my face. No one looking around. As you raise your hands, heaven sees. It's more important that God sees it than I see it, understand? But when you do this, you're saying, Yes, Lord, yes, yes. I've been struggling. I've been pushing you away for so long. But today, today, this Christmas on Wednesday, is going to be so good, so grand, so meaningful. Why? Because today, I choose to give my life to Jesus Christ. Is there anybody else? Just raise your hands high enough. I see that hand, sir. I see that hand. Anybody else? Hallelujah. 
Oh, Ramanda Katarada. Yeah, anybody else? My, my, my light is on my face. Okay. I'm going to call those of you who raise your hands to come forward in a short while. But I want to open the altar as well. I want to believe that all those testimonies that I've shown to you on the screen are not another person's testimony. It can be yours, you see. It can be yours. So I don't know what it is that, that troubles you as we close this year. Something unfinished. It could be a healing. It could be a, a member of your family who was not well. It could be something that's incomplete. Is there and yet not there. A breakthrough and yet not, break, not breakthrough yet. But today, we want to have total breakthrough. Amen? In your business, in your work, your family. Hey, but the reason why I give all to God, you must be desperate for God. If you're not desperate, what happens? Nothing will happen. One. But you come to Him, you take one step to Him, He takes ten steps to you. Believe me that. Believe me. I've seen enough. I've seen enough of cases. Family is being changed here. So I'm going to give the altar call. For those of you who want to be prayed for, either for healing, for restoration, for, for family uh, 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 things, for your children, for your work, I don't know what it is. Let's believe. Amen. That this Christmas, God will work a mighty miracle in your family, in your life. And those of you who raise up your hands to accept Jesus, you also come forward on my left. Let's all stand. Shall we do that? Let's sing this song as we close. Hallelujah. The altar is open. Let's believe God. Amen. Let's believe God. Zacchaeus ran up a tree. Oh, how, how unsightly that was. And yet he did it. And Jesus came. Jesus came to his house. Hey, all I want you to do is just come forward. I'm not asking you to climb a tree. I'm just asking you to step forward in faith, in belief that even as you do that, Jesus Christ will come into your situation, whether for healing, for your family, for your loved ones. I don't know what it is. But because you took the step of faith, it activates, it activates the mechanism and the dynamics of heaven to work on your behalf. The altar is open. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I come to you. Hallelujah. Let my heart be changed. Whatever it is, Dream it could be for your children, it could be for salvation in your way. household. Because Jesus says, Can salvation has now come to your household. Even as you come forward, two days' time, you bring that person who is pre believing to Christmas service and let's believe that he will be saved. Amen. Whoa. Today, let's take a step of faith. Believing in the next 48 hours, our loved one will be saved by the power of your love. Hallelujah. Whoa. Let's sing the second verse. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face to face. One-on-one -on -one encounter. One-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Look to the Lord, my friend. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. There are no issues that are so impossible that God cannot resolve for you. In my life, in living every day. Hallelujah. By the power of your love. Worship the 
Lord, my friend. Worship the Lord. Oh, be close. Let your love of you, would you just spend a moment of quietness before God when God is in the house you know, the atmosphere is charged with the manifest presence of the Lord you open your heart receive it into your life and your entire ecosystem will be changed your family, your work, your environment from the inside to the outside. The entire ecosystem is changed. So in the closing moments of this morning, I want every one of you without fail to receive it. To receive it, will you do that? So that if we step into the new year, it's going to be an awesome new year. It's going to be an awesome new decade. Wow. Ten years. And if God is with you, nothing can be against you, my friend. Believe me, nothing can be against you. Come, every one of you, as we close, can you connect with God? In your situation, whatever it may be, in your family, in your work, Every one of you. I'm going to close in a couple of minutes time while ministry goes on to the front. Every one of you without fail because I want every one of you to be blessed. I want every one of you to be blessed. I want to believe that whatever issue that you have just prayed in your heart to God is not wasted or squandered away. I want to believe that within the next six months, whatever that you have prayed about will come to pass and you will be amazed at the way God will turn things around for you not in a way that you expected it to be because that will be normal that is what you expect 
But I want to believe that whatever happens in the next six months, God will turn it around in such a way that you will be awed. And you know, and you know, it is God. You see, it is God. But God will turn it around for you. And He will restore back to you the years the locusts have eaten in your family, in your finances, in your health, in your peace, in your relationships. And like Zacchaeus, there will be great joy. There will be great joy because Jesus has come into your household. Jesus has come into your household. Hallelujah. Father, let's all raise our hands to Him as we close. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank You for the Word of God. The same Jesus that transformed blind Bartimaeus. The same Jesus that changed the life of Zacchaeus from a taker to a giver is here today. The same Jesus is here today. And He wants to come into our house, into our families, into our lives so that there will be a difference So Father, in the name of Jesus, I seal this in everybody's body, everybody's home, so that we receive the fullness, the plethora of the Lord. Not partial, not incomplete, but the fullness of the blessings of God will be your portion. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you as we prepare for Christmas. May the Lord turn His face towards every one of you and your loved ones. Many of them are not here with you today, but wherever they are, God will take care of them. Amen? You take care of God's house, God will take care of your house. And the Lord turn His face towards you and always grant you shalom. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all people say, let's give God a good clap offering.